Income tax 2022-2023 standard deduction. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Most of this information comes from the Form 1040 Instructions Tax Year 2022 line instructions. You can find it at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. If we're looking at the income tax formula, we're down here at... Yeah, and maybe I'll file a federal income tax return. The standard deduction, which you might call the below the line deduction, as opposed to the above the line deduction, the adjustments to income. Let's just do a quick recap of the income tax equation here. The first half in essence being an income statement because it's an income tax, although it's a strange income statement. Remembering when we think about the income statement, income is basically bad. Everything is flipped on its head for taxes and the expenses called deductions in this case are basically good. The second half of the income tax equation will be calculating the income tax, applying any other taxes like self-employment tax, for example. Employable or very employable. Applying credits and payments uh, in order to get to the refund or the amount due. We're focused here still on the top half of the equation, in essence, the income statement. So income statement is in essence income minus expenses or income minus deductions. But we have a couple steps along the way before we get to the net income or taxable income. IRS code allows us to deduct from your taxable income. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We've got income minus the adjustments to income, the above the line deductions we saw in a prior presentation gets us to the adjusted gross income or AGI. And then we take the greater of the standard deduction, our focus now, or the itemized deductions. We'll talk about itemized deductions later. Now our focus is on the standard deduction. Now also note that a few years back, they increased the level of the standard deductions, the amounts of the standard deduction, which I believe was an attempt to make the tax code a little bit easier. So a quick recap on why they might do that or the thought process of that would be, if you were to make the tax code easier, you might say, hey, look, let's just get rid of the itemized deductions, for example, and try to flatten out possibly uh, the tax rates so that it's easier to actually calculate the tax. Those are usually the thought processes uh, that come into place. And the reason for that would be, uh, if you think about an income tax, the natural type of expenses for an income tax would be those expenses that you needed to expend in order to generate the income. So if you had two businesses, for example, and one of the businesses had a lot more expenses that they need to expend in order to generate the, the revenue, uh, you wouldn't really want to tax both those businesses on their gross income, the top line, but on the net income, because one business had to consume a lot more in order to generate the revenue. Now, in our income tax system, a lot of people are W-2 employees, which means that you don't have a lot of deductions with relation to your job because the assumption is that they're handled by the employer. But you can see that when you talk about a Schedule C, for example, the general rule being if it's a deduction if you had to consume it in order to generate the revenue. And then the tax code puts all of this other stuff uh, in place, like we're going to give you a deduction for to save for retirement or something like that. We're going to give you a deduction because we want to incentivize homes. We want to give you a deduction of the state taxes uh, for, for whatever reason. We want to give you a deduction in order to incentivize charitable uh, deductions and whatnot uh, so people give to charity. These could all be good causes, but you can also see how they can complicate the code. And they often tend to, as complicated code, more laws typically do, benefit more wealthy individuals. The more complex the code is, the more kind of nuanced the deductions are, and the more the deductions you could get if you had the cash flow to do whatever the law says to do, 
usually that's going to benefit the higher income individuals. So oftentimes there's kind of a move to flatten things out to try to lower the itemized deductions from time to time and then try to uh, possibly flatten out the progressive tax rates so that it's easier to calculate. And then once you do that, then it gets bloated back up again. So right now, more people are taking the standard deduction than they were before. And then I would suspect in the future, depending on what happens in politics, that we'll see bloating in the tax code uh, that will either make the itemized deductions more relevant in the future, or they'll start putting deductions elsewhere, like on the first page of the 1040 or in the adjustments to income or something like that. But that's where we are now. So here's where the standard deduction is on the first page of the uh, form 1040. You've got basically your deductions on the left-hand side listed out. So if you're single filer versus married filing, uh, joint versus head of household and so on. Those are the general rules. We'll take a look at some examples of them in a future presentation in tax software and tax forms. So standard deduction tip. So if you are filing form 1040 SR, you can find a standard deduction chart at the last page of that form that can calculate the amount of your standard deduction in most situations. Obviously tax software is often a useful uh, kind of component. Notice that there's a couple kind of variations to the standard deduction, it's it's kind of in that box on the first page of, of the form 1040. But then if you're over, uh, if you're over a certain age, then there could be an adjustment to the standard deduction. And if you're blind, or, there could be some other adjustments to the standard deduction, which are often related to the form 1040 SR. Uh, but again, we'll dive into that when we get into the example problems. Single and married filing jointly. If you if you or your spouse, if you are married and filing a joint return can be claimed as a dependent on someone else's return, check the appropriate box and the standard deduction section. If you were a dual status alien, check the spouse itemizes on a separate return or were a dual status alien uh, box. So. These are a couple check boxes up top if you can be claimed by a dependent, if uh, someone else can claim you. And then we've got this dual status alien, which is again, kind of more of an unusual situation. So if you were a dual status alien and you file a joint return with your spouse, who was a US citizen or resident alien at the end of 2022, and you and your spouse agree to be taxed on your combined worldwide income, don't check the box. So we've got the age blindness. So if you or your spouse, if you are married and filing a joint return, were uh, born before January 2nd, 1958, or were blind at the end of 2022, check the appropriate boxes on the line labeled age slash blindness. So the reason that's here with the standard deduction is because the standard deduction will be dependent upon the filing status, single, married, filing, joint, head of household, qualified, widow, widower, and then again, you could have a, an adjustment to those standard deductions amounts based on uh, an age or, or blindness, which could increase those amounts as well. So remember from filing statuses perspectives, I would usually think of uh, the people that are married or the people that are unmarried. If you're unmarried, you can either file single or, or head of household, depend whether and single would be the worst. So you try to file head of household if you can, but you would need a dependent uh, in order to do so. And the standard deductions will be lowest for single, a little bit higher for head of household. You would think the standard deduction would be doubled for married filing joint, which it is. And then married filing separate, you would think it would kind of bounce back to the single area. But remember, married filing separate is not exactly the same as a single. So just be careful with that. So don't check any boxes for your spouse if your filing status is head of household. So death of spouse in 2022. So what if a spouse dies in 2022, the current tax year? If your spouse was born before January 2nd, 1958, but died in 2022 before reaching age 65, don't check the box that says spouse was born before January 2nd, uh, 1958. So we've got these kind of unusual situations uh, where we have a death and then this cutoff situation. A person is considered to reach age 65 on the day before the person's 65th birthday. Example, your spouse was born on February 14th, 1957 and died on February 13th, 2022. Your spouse is considered age 65 at the time of death. 
check the appropriate box for your spouse. However, if your spouse died on February 12th, 2022, your spouse isn't considered age 65, don't check the box. So death of taxpayer in 2022, if you are preparing a return for someone who died in 2022, you can see publication 501 before completing the standard deduction information. Blindness plus, if you weren't totally blind as of December 31st, 2022, you must get a statement certified by your eye doctor, uh, ophthalmologist or opt optometrist. So in other words, if you have the standard deduction and then you're trying to up the standard deduction because you're claiming that you're blind, then obviously if you're not fully blind, then there be could become a question, are you legally blind or are you blind in enough in terms of <laughs> whatever the rate is uh, for claiming the deduction, which means you've got to get uh, certification here from someone for that. So you can't, uh, you can't see better than 2200 in your better eye with glasses or contact lenses or your field of vision is 20 degrees or less. So if your eye condition isn't likely to improve beyond the conditions listed above, you can get a statement certified by your eye doctor, ophthalmologist or optometrist to this effect instead. So if you must keep the statement uh, for your record, so obviously you're not gonna attach the statement typically to your tax return, but if the IRS came back within an audit and, and said, hey, we need documentation because you said you were blind here and whatnot, then uh, you'd have to be able to provide that like with any other kind of documentation in that event, the event of an audit. So you can download or view online tax forms and publications in a variety of formats, including text only braille ready files browser friendly html so then of course the iris is trying to get their documentation in a format to accommodate uh different individuals with different needs including blind uh individuals or people with visually impairments so if you receive a notice or letter but you would prefer to have a braille or large print you can use form 9000 alternative media preference to request notices in an alternative format. So you can get your notices in another format in that case. Married filing separately. If your filing status is married filing separately and your spouse itemizes deductions on their return, check the spouse itemizes on a separate return or you were a dual status alien box. So now you've got a situation where if you're married, you have the option of filing married filing joint uh, which would be the standard option, which means that the standard deduction you would be think would basically be double what it would for a single filer. But then what if you file married filing separately? If you file married filing separately, you would think that the standard deduction would basically bounce back to what it would be if you filed sing single, which is often the case if you would have filed basically uh, as, an, as a standard deduction if filed married filing joint. But if you're in a situation where one of the spouses would itemize, why would they itemize? Because their itemized deductions are greater than the standard deduction. Then the IRS is going to be wary of, of a situation where people are going to try to split uh, filing separately just for tax benefits, having one person take the greater standard, uh, the greater itemized deduction and the other still getting uh, the standard deduction. So you've got to let the IRS know that if one spouse took the the itemized deduction that's that may limit the other spouse from taking you know the standard deduction on uh, the other on the other side when you're filing two returns instead of one married filing separate returns instead of one married filing joint return so if your filing status is married filing separately and your spouse was born before january 2nd 1958 or was blind at the end of 2022 you can check the appropriate boxes on the line labeled age blindness if your spouse had no income isn't filing a return and can't be claimed as a dependent on another person's return